It's been interesting so far this year, right? And you must understand that there is no way that God is going to allow the enemy just to get away with it. We've been, been through some very interesting days and we've got some very interest, interest, interesting days to come. Jesus is coming back. I said, Jesus is coming back. And we need to renew our great hope in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything's lining up just right. The signs of the time and the intensity and the frequency of things are lining up just right. And I am looking up and saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Your redemption draweth nigh. But before he comes, we got some devil butt kicking to do. I don't know who he think he is. Now, I'm, I'm a, this is going to be a kind of different sermon. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some scripture and then I'm going to decree the promises on you. And then I'm going to read some more and then I'm going to decree it on you. And this is a night of equipping. Glory be to God. Now, over the next three days of my sessions, I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> divine recovery uh, from spiritual idolatry. Now, I won't get to the idolatry part tonight because I want to talk about the first part. Divine recovery. Divine recovery is about to hit your life. Nobody knows what you have gone through like you do. And I thank God that you had enough sense to pull up your shield of faith. And every time the enemy came, you pulled your shield of faith up. I thank God for that. But there's some payback. There's some payback that needs to be dished out. Amen. And, uh, so I want to begin, I'm, I'm, I call this, I'm going to talk, I'm going to specifically deal with the night godly restoration. But I want to look at the book of Joel chapter two. Let's start there. And uh, I, I really, it would bring me great pleasure. I just want to break his neck tonight. You know the song, I'm a friend of God. I ain't a friend of the devil. I can't stand him. And in the name of Jesus, I can't stand what he's doing to people. And I can't stand the, the fear that they're walking around in. I can't stand none of that. So, you know, it, maybe we can, tonight we can just come together and make him pay a little bit. You understand? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Joel chapter two. And um, when you get there, I'm going to look at verse 21. Joel chapter two and in, in verse 21. Now, if uh, I, they used to say this in the Baptist church, if you pray with me, I won't be long. <laughs> Come on and pray with me, church. You understand what I mean? Pray with me, I won't be long. Now, you sit up there and look at me like something matter with me. You pray with me, I'll be like, like coffee, hot, black, and quick. <laughs> Verse 21, he says, fear not. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do and has done great things. So fear not because of what he's already done. Now I'm taking the, the, the you know, what he meant contextually for, for, for Israel and I'm bringing it out to you. And I'm declaring it and decreeing it right now that we will not fear. Fear is, it, we're not fearing, fear not. We're not going to be afraid. We're not going to be anxious. We're not going to be af afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow. We're not going to be afraid of what, 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 what other vari variants and all. I ain't afraid. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I am not, I will not fear. Come on, say that. I will not fear. He said, fear not. Be glad. be glad. 
Some might say, well, be glad for what? Well, you got a lot to be glad for. Be glad that you are alive. Be glad that you woke up this morning in your right mind. Be glad for, for you got food to eat, you got a job. Be glad, find a reason to be glad. And if you have to, be glad by faith. Be glad based on what Jesus has promised you in his word. Be glad, don't be sad, be glad. No more sad day, no more down days, no more fear day. I'm gonna be glad and I'm gonna rejoice. Now I decree that on you right now that you are glad and you will rejoice because God has done and will do great things. Man, I believe that. He goes on and he says, be not afraid, even the beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree, the vine do yield their strength. He says, now talking to the beast, y'all don't even have to be afraid. I got you. And then he says this again, be glad, you children of Zion, and rejoice. There it is. Be glad and rejoice. Stop waiting on something to happen before you are glad and rejoice. Before something even happens, go ahead and be glad and rejoice. You ought to be so glad and you ought to be in such rejoicing that the devil ought to pause and say, what you doing? That's how we're going to issue some payback. We're going to issue some payback because he's done enough where he thinks we should be sad, we should be down, we should be in fear, but that's not how we're wired as, as faith people. We're not wired like that as faith people. As faith people, we will do the complete opposite of what hell thought it was going to bring in our lives. When you bring sadness, we're going to be glad. When you bring sorrow, we're going to rejoice. And we don't have to wait until we see something before we be glad. I double dog Dino dare you to just, to just go home from this convention and be glad and rejoice and stay glad and keep rejoicing until somebody asks you, what you glad for? Now that's the opportunity you can go to preach to them. Now, now, now you gotta understand something. I, I had two hours of sleep last night and I am going to bust the devil's head in. You understand what I'm saying? And you are going to help me. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. So he said, so he said here, be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain. Now rain here represents the anointing. I'm going to take it from the literal, but he's given you the former rain moderately. He's given you the former, there was an anointing uh, that were on the prophets of old. And he says he will cause to come down for you the rain, but this time it's going to come down the former and the latter rain all at the same time. That's a good reason to be glad, right? All at the same time, there is about to be a storm of anointing to hit your house. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You see, people don't like to hear the word battle. Battles are real, but your victories are as real as those battles, amen? And I'm telling you, there's an anointing to do battle. That anointing is called might the Spirit of God will come mightily upon you. And I decree over your lives right now that that spirit of a, and that anointing and that might's getting ready to come over your life, over your relationships, it's getting ready to come over your business, it's getting ready to come over your ministry, it's getting ready to come over your children. Be glad and rejoice. There's a, there's a tsunami of anointing that's about to hit your life. Burdens are going to be removed. Yokes are going to be destroyed. 
stuff that kept you up and stuff that kept you stressed and stuff that messed with you. They're going to be removed. It's going to be destroyed because of that anointing. Hallelujah. Your, your, your business is going to start working because of that anointing. Lack is going to be removed because of that anointing. The divorce is going to be removed because of that anointing. Your children are going to come home from the enemy's camp back to your house. Be glad and rejoice. My God. My God. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And he says, and the floors shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. So now it sounds to me like harvest is coming. Out of everything the enemy has thrown at you over the last couple of years, who would have ever thought you would still have harvest time? I decree that your harvest time is now. I decree that your harvest time is right now, praise God. In fact, the favor of God will go ahead of you to divinely arrange some things for you before you even get there, you're about to run into your harvest. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it. See, T, you, you got to catch this tonight. And you, 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 you sit and write it, you, you, you can write if you can, but you got to catch this tonight. You might miss some while you write, but you got to catch this tonight. I believe the Holy Ghost is going to say some things to you individually. He's going to whisper in your ear. While I'm talking right now, he's going to be talking to you and giving you divine wisdom and divine direction, showing you what to do, when to do it, where to go, how to go, what to do. That's why he keeps saying, be glad and rejoice. <laughs> now, he said, and I will restore. That's God's MO. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army will I send among you and you shall eat in plenty. I'll let me back up. And I will restore. I will restore. Excuse my English, but I ain't nowhere in the world. All that has happened and knocked on your door and God not show up with some Recompense. Some of y'all been standing and standing and you stood it and stood it and stand it and stood it and stand it. But here's the reason for you to be glad and rejoice. I will restore. I'm going to restore your health. I'm going to restore your wealth. I'm going to restore your peace. I'm going to restore your anything that's missing, anything that's broken. God's going to show up. Listen, I'm not talking about what you're going to do. I'm talking about this is God saying, I'm going to show up and do some things in this earth just so you'll know it was me. You're not going to be able to boast about what's getting ready to happen. Because what's getting ready to happen, there's no way you could have done it by yourself. There are things that are getting ready to happen to you. I decree it. There are things that are getting ready to happen to you that you won't even be able to give an explanation for. Hey, and the only way you're going to be able to respond is by saying, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, we will be glad and we will rejoice. 
See, you got to catch that, see. You, see, while I'm preaching tonight, you can just sit there and say, well, I, I don't think it's going to be me. Dear God, things have just been nobody knows the trouble I've seen. You can sit there like that if you want to. Or you can sit there and say, I take that. Yeah, I, I take that too, praise God, yeah. Uh-huh, I take all that right now in the name of Jesus. I take all of that, but I will not spend another day of my life allowing the devil to come in to steal my joy, to steal my gladness. I will rejoice and be glad. My God, my God, my God, my God. And, uh, and you shall eat in plenty. Now, there's going to there be some things come to happen, you know, to the food source, and there's going to be, there be but famines have already started in parts of the world right now, but it won't come near you. It ain't going to come near you because you don't live in the land of scarcity anymore. You've gotten born again and you have come out of Egypt and you are now in Goshen and in Goshen you shall eat in plenty. There was not enough straw in Egypt to make brick but there was enough in Goshen. There was no light in, in Egypt, but there was light in Goshen. There wasn't plenty, but there's plenty in Goshen. Welcome to Goshen! <laughs> plenty, I'm glad. I'm rejoicing, plenty. I'm glad, I'm rejoicing, plenty. I don't care what they say. I don't care how many reports they do on the news. I don't care what's in the paper. I eat in plenty, praise the Lord. I eat in plenty, praise the Lord. God knows how to use the animal kingdom to make sure his word comes to pass. I eat in plenty. Join me, say that. I eat in plenty. Mm-hmm. He says, and I'm going to be satisfied and I'm going to praise the name of the Lord that has, and this will be your testimony, that has dealt wondrously with you and my people. Now, you know, in context, he's talking to Israel, but I'm talking to you tonight. And my people shall never be put to shame. A thousand will fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Therefore, be glad and rejoice. Listen, you might as well practice that here so you'll be able to do it when you get back where you're going. Be glad and rejoice. Yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, something's coming. Something's coming, praise God. You ought to sense it right now, something's coming. Hallelujah, a move of the spirit that this earth has never seen before. Something's coming. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up and I'm, I'm tanked up and I'm right slap dab in the middle of something good. See, they busy talking about something else coming. I ain't talking about that. I already told you a thousand shall come at my side, 10,000 my right hand. They ain't gonna be able to touch me. I'm Psalms 91 equipped. 
<laughs> I'm Psalm 91 equipped. Bring it on, devil. You want to dance? Come on, bring it on. I will not fear. I will not be ashamed. But I will be glad and I will rejoice. You need to do that at home. Don't wait till you get to church to do it. You need to do that at home. Find you a closet or a bathroom somewhere on the side and just go in there and just cut a step a little bit. <laughs> 20, 21 years ago, about 21 years ago, I was in Sacramento, California, getting ready to do a meeting. The Lord specifically told me not, my, my son was young at that time, said, you told, told, he told me he couldn't go. I didn't want anybody to go with me. And I was going out of this weird obligation of my integrity's on the line, so I'm going to go. But I felt in my spirit I wasn't supposed to be there. But I, I need to go because my, my word's on the line. You know that dumb mistake we made. You know, telling the Holy Ghost, the author of all integrity. That's good. And so I, I went and uh, just to make a long story short, we, I got up the morning like I normally do and, and I made these, make confessions. I, I'm, I make these confessions all, all the time. I believe you have what you say. I believe that. Amen. Well, we don't. Well, you, yeah, I do. Well, folks don't do that no more. I, I do. I still believe you can have what you say. I still believe that death and life is in the power of the tongue. I still believe that when you decree a thing, it shall come to pass and be established. And so I decreed things over my life, over my safety and so forth. And so we got in the car. We were on our way to do the first session in that meeting in Sacramento. And, uh, the pastor who we were visiting, he had just got a, a new Suburban and wanted me to sit in the front. And I said, well, I don't want to sit in the front. I said, as I sit in the front, I need to put, I have to put my seatbelt on. I'll mess my tie up. I don't want to sit in the front. <laughs> well, I sat in the front, put my seatbelt on. And it was about four or eight of us in there. And uh, a day that will change my life forever. Now, I am not concerned about whether or not you believe what I'm getting ready to tell you. After being in the mission more than 40 years, I don't care. <laughs> well, I don't like the suit you get on. Did I ask you when I put it on? The biggest bondage we have today is people bondage. Quit getting in bondage to people so you can be free to be glad and rejoice. So, so I went and we got in the car and, and it was a four way and, and everything changed. This car ran the red light, hit the Suburban from underneath and jacked it up and it took flight and it began to turn. And I grabbed the front of the, the dashboard <laughs> and I said, I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes open because if I die, I want to see how this thing works. <laughs> I want to see how close I came to and just see how it works. <laughs> and that's something, I'm serious, I, I said that. So my eyes were open. And, and I remember the thing turning. Oh, glory to God. It's 21 years ago. It seemed like it was yesterday. Yeah. And the, the, the car was still rotating this way. And I was going this way. But at this particular time, I saw two angels come right past my face. I, I know what I saw. They, someone said, well, were they black angels or white angels? <laughs> See, that's why the world needs the church. They need us, man. 
Somebody said, what color were they? The only way I could answer it, they were light. They, they, their face was light, but you could see the features and their clothes were like their face, like it was kind of one. And so when I rotated over and I saw these two angels go past me like this, I'm looking, but now my eyes are open, but I am now seeing a whole different realm. Uh, in the realm in front of me, there were a group of people. They were out of focus. I was on one end and they were on the other end. And the closer we started coming together, the, they, beca- they, 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 the, they came into focus. They began to come into focus where it seems like I can, I can almost recognize some of them. And right in the middle of just about recognizing who these folks were that were coming towards me and I come towards them. The voice of God spoke and I saw the voice. I saw it in between me and them and it said, he said, no, too much unfinished business. <laughs> then my eyes opened. Now I'm upside down in the car. We had landed on the roof. And I don't know if I was in my body or out. I was like, what? What? And so I start like, okay, is this me or have I gone? <laughs> Friend of mine was in the back, who's our associate pastor now. You know, you know the windows of a suburban in the back back area. I don't. He's he's an ex All American football player. Shoulders that big. I don't know how this happened. But he, there was a hole in the window where he went out, and the people around reported seeing a man fly. So when he went out, the glass got in his eye, so he never saw any of this. But he did see the angel. Because when they checked us in the hospital, I said, what, what happened? Let me, where's Ken? I went to see him. I said, did you see that? He said, those angels. I said, you saw them? <laughs> so he went and landed in the front windshield of this woman's car, which you know, most of the time you're decapitated. Imagine this woman sitting at the red light (laughs) and a man drops in and his head is now on her thigh. She had years of therapy. (sighs) I go into this and another friend of mine was there and he thought he was going to die, take care of my girls. And I called my wife. And I said, we, we just had a, 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 an, an accident and, and, and Ken was down here and, and, and I'm trying to talk. She said, hold on, hold on. There will be no death here today. Yeah. You see, there's a devil loose. And he's come, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And we pity patty. And just sitting back, letting him do things like he think he can. When all of the authority has been put into our hands. And it is time for us to release our faith and take hold of that which is rightly ours and do what the Bible says. Lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. You got an enemy and he don't like you. And some of y'all, well, maybe Mr. Devil can get saved. I'm going to pray for his salvation. If I I wasn't under the covenant of temperance, I'd slap your jaws for just saying something like that. You have an enemy and he wants to destroy your life. And the way we get him back, watch this, is every time you're glad and rejoice because of what God has done, is doing, and will do, it befuddles him. It freaks him out. He can't understand why after everything you done went through, you're still going around trusting and believing this God 
Now, the reason I told you that story about the car wreck, because the enemy thought that that was going to be enough for me not to go and preach. Boy, please, I'm from Collie Paul. What you talking about? I, I got dressed. I went and I told the driver, I said, now drive the speed limit. I got to the church, news media everywhere. They had all kinds of things. That crippled all dollar died. Uh, but he alive. And I mean, it was, it was kind of funny when you walk in. I thought you were dead. <laughs> I was a little sore. Got me a chair. Got in that pool pit. Said, turn to your Bibles. And I began to teach. <laughs> now, here's my point. What's the extent that the devil will use and go after you with to try to stop you from being functional in the will of God that he has called for your life? You got to stop being these bunch of spiritual sissies. At the first sign of trouble, you want to just give up, cave in, curl up and quit. Now is the time when the enemy shows up, you need to just treat him like a flea. And let him know who you are. Don't go to God, you know, and go, you know, well, God, I, 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 need, you to, I need to talk to you about my trouble. No, I'll go to your trouble and talk to your trouble about what God's already done. Yeah. Amen. All right, now, let's, let's get a little bit more in this. Now. Things that need to, need restoration are things that have over time been allowed to slip in a state of neglect or disrepair, the, the condition of needing repair. Things like maybe prayer life that needs repair. Because it's interesting around the country for some churches that were closed and some that are still closed. It's interesting around the country that uh, all people got to do is mash a button and they like, I ain't mashing no button. It's like, okay, so what have y'all been doing this whole time? Exactly. Prayer life needs to be restored. Your attitude towards other people need to be restored. Your, your finances might need to be restored. Your faith in some cases, thank God for this convention this week, Amen. needs to be restored. Your physical body may need to be restored. Your peace, your courage, your confidence in God might need to be restored. Hebrews chapter 2 and 11 cautions us to be careful not to let certain things slip. The New Living Translation says, have you drifted away from the truth you know from God and his word? And so most people have come to understand restoration as, as the means to bringing back something or putting back something to, back into its original state. That's the world's definition of restoration. The world's rest, uh, definition is to, to bring back to the original state, but that's not God's definition of restoration. God is not going to restore you back to the original state. He always takes it better than what it was. Godly, rep, re, godly restoration is bringing something into state where it would be even better than the original. Oh, I don't think y'all heard that. You're about to be better than you originally were. You're about to do better than what you originally were. <laughs> Everything about God's divine recovery is gonna be about you being better. You might as well give yourself a new middle name. George Bitter Griffin. Because God's not going to restore it back to original state. It's, it's always going to be better. Look at Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42, verses 10 and 12. Check this out, man. It, it's, it's something I want you to just so get a hold of tonight because I want you waking up tomorrow glad and rejoicing. Somebody said, what you glad for? You got time? 
I'm all glad for, I'm, I'm glad for what he's done, what he's doing, and oh, what he's about to do. Job 42, verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Underline that, that's interesting. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Somebody shout better. Yeah. And then in, in verse 12, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. More than his beginning. More than his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep from 7,000. He had 6,000 camels from three. He had a thousand yoke of oxen from five and a thousand she asses. It was better. I said it was better. So when we talk about believing God that he will restore, it's better. He's going to jack it up some. And he's going to do it so you'll know he did it. Yeah, but Brother Doll, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I just feel like, you know, but, but what about me? No, no, no. God says, I, I, have seen, I have seen you walk in the cheaper rather than the deeper. And, and, and so step aside a little bit. I'm going to show you what I really think of you. You, you. you keep thinking little of yourself. You keep wondering, could it be me? Could I have this? Is it really God's will for me to walk in this kind of blessing? And God's like, I'm trying to take you to the better, but you stuck in the average. But notice what he says here. This is important. Restoration begins with forgiveness. And Job turned to captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. It begins with forgiveness. Unforgiveness and strife can hinder restoration because you're in the center of the circle and you've made it all about you. And God's trying to take you, oh my God, I heard that, Lord. God's trying to take you from your past, but some of you want to stay married to your past. And what some of you need to do is have a funeral for your past. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You're so connected to your past, God can't take you forward because you're so connected to your past. That's what Paul was trying to tell us. He was like, listen, I hadn't attained everything, but there's one thing I do. I forget about the things that are behind me and I'm reaching to those things that are before me. It's time to start reaching to those things that are before me. Always in the past. The past ministering to you emotionally. Always in the past. God's trying to show you how much he loves you, how much you, he's forgiven you, and you're still stuck. Oh, I still regret this. Oh, but if I did this. Oh, but please, please hear me good. Your past is past, and there's nothing you can do about what's past. So get out of there. Oh, but if I only did this. You didn't. So get out. Yeah, but every time I hear that word, it made me think about the past. Stop listening to that word. Get out. Somebody call you, hey, how you doing? Well, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I just wish I was a better mother. Wish I was a better father. I just really, please excuse my word. I hope it's okay if I say it, but maybe I shouldn't say it if I'm thinking it's okay. Say, I really sucked as a parent. You know what? Please stop comparing your parenting with the movies. There's no such thing as a perfect parent. We get up and talk like we are, but there's no such thing as a perfect parent. You've made a lot of mistakes. You're going to make a lot more. So here's what happens. You know, your kids may come up to you. Uh, one of them came to me one time and they said, well, you know, you didn't do this and you didn't do this and you didn't do this. And I said, you know, there's a lot of things my mom and daddy didn't do. So I thank God I got saved. So whatever they didn't do, Jesus did. So instead of you, instead of you playing the blame game and being the victim, Seems to me you need to go and hook up with the same Jesus I hooked up with. And whatever I didn't do so well, Jesus will do it very well. You know, there's an epidemic going on in the world of the disrespect and dishonor that parents are getting from their adult children. 
And they don't understand that their prosperity and their long life is tied to how they honor their mother and their father. It's the only commandment, the only moral law that came with a promise. And you 40 years old and ain't said nothing to your mama in the last five years because you playing the victim. Not realizing it won't be well with you. Your mama in Hawaii. She just met Frank. She having a good time. And that's one of the signs of the last, of, of, of last days where society is concerned, just how people behave. Yes. Was that too much for y'all? Y'all, y'all all right? Oh, I know. Some of y'all are still stuck on suck. I repent. Look at Ezek- uh, Exodus chapter 22. I'm almost finished here. Exodus chapter 22. My God. My God. I'm glad, man. I'm glad. Hallelujah. You remember this? I was glad when they said unto me. You know what the house is. That's the presence. Amen. Exodus chapter 22. And verse one, look at this. I want to decree this over you. Exodus 22 and verse one. If a man shall steal an ox, one, or steal a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. This has always been God's heart. It ain't never going back to the original state. Just in case some of y'all looking forward to going back to exactly what you used to be. You ain't never going to be what you used to be. Did you hear what I said? You ain't never going to be what you used to be. Somebody said, I used to be broke. You'll never be broke another day in your life. Somebody said, I used to be sick all the time. You'll never be sick like that another day in your life. Somebody said, I used to be mean. You'll never be mean like that. Not another day in your life. Because when you have encountered the restoration of God, it's double for your trouble. And even much more as we move into scripture. Look at Joshua chapter 5 and 12. Joshua chapter 5 and 12. My God, my God. My God, my God. I better be careful. I feel like preaching up here in a minute. My God, my God. I got me a church here tonight. My God. I don't know where y'all came from, but I'm going to tell you, we we can have some church up here tonight. My. uh, I got to make sure I don't hurt myself. Look at this. Joshua 5, 12. And, oh, and the manna ceased on, on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn, the old corn of the land. The manna ceased and they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But, uh-oh, they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. The bad corn was gone. The manna stopped, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan. Here's what I want you to hear. Get ready to eat the fruit of the promised land. What do I mean? Get ready to eat the fruit of God's promises. See, up until now, You know those promises. You've quoted those promises. You've meditated on those promises. But God's getting ready to do a thing where you're getting ready to eat 
the fruit of those promises. Praise the Lord. Go back and look at those promises. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You're getting ready to eat that fruit. I decree and declare that you're about to eat the fruit of God's promises. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Think about that thing. Well, I, I'm getting ready to eat the fruit of the promises. Not just to read the fruit of the promises. I'm getting ready to eat the fruit of the promises. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> You've been eating of dry corn for quite some time. You've been eating of average for quite some time, but you're getting ready to eat the fruit out of the promised land. Hallelujah, you're getting ready to eat the healing out of the promised land. Hallelujah, you're getting ready to eat the promotion out of the promised land. You're getting ready to eat relationships out of the promised land. You're getting ready to eat prosperity out of the promised land. I don't know how you've been eating lately, but you're getting ready to eat out of the promise that God has already made for you. But you gotta be glad. I said you gotta be glad. Oh, don't stop that hammer. My God, my God. Well, I'm a Baptist boy. Don't stop. Don't stop that hammer. Oh! Woo! My God. Mm, mm, mm. Let, let me do, let me do, let me do something just a little bit and then we'll, we'll talk about how God is still stirring in the nest of your life. We'll talk about when, when the devil thought he had you down, Jesus reached down in, in the middle of a pit and picked you up out of that pit, placed your feet on a solid ground, put a new song in your heart. And then we'll talk about how you started praising him. And we'll stop and talk about how you start giving him the glory. Oh, the glory. Oh, I got to have a little church in here. I, I... Watch this. See, you, you can eat and have a little church at the same time. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You can eat and have a little church at the same time. Eat some collard greens, then taste a little apple pie. Eat some squash, eat a little lemon meringue. Because when that word gets on the inside of you and you begin to look and see how God has blessed you, you begin to look and see how far God has brought you. You begin to look and see how God paid your bills and you didn't know where the money was going to come from. You can't help but to give him praise. You can't help but to give him a shout. Oh, shout. All right, I'm, I'm trying to get to Esther. I'm trying to get to Esther. I'm trying to get to Esther. I know some of you are wondering, what is, what, what happened to you, Dollar? What's going on? Well, first of all, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. because he saved me one day and he raised me out of a bed of affliction. When the doctor said I had cancer, God healed me of the cancer. When the doctor said I had meningitis, God healed me of the meningitis. When I was in that wreck over 21 years ago and they thought I was dead, they didn't call the ambulance, but they went ahead and called the morgue. God delivered me out of that situation. So excuse me why I shout and give him praise. Excuse me why I rejoice and I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. My God, Jesus. 
Jesus, my way maker. Jesus, my battle axe in the time of a battle. Jesus, my bomb in Gilead. Jesus, my sweet rose of Sharon. Jesus, my rock in a weary land. Jesus, my supply house. You see, I don't know about you, but I got to praise God. I don't know about you, but I got to praise God. Oh, he's been mighty good to me. He's been mighty good to me. He's been mighty good to me. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what you know, but you don't know like I know how good God's been to me. And so every now and then I gotta step out this, this, this whatever role you think I am and I got to praise God. I gotta praise God. Throughout the 2020 year, when I didn't know how to pass a church without nobody there. God turned it into the best year of our ministry. Every church around the world paid for. You, you heard me, paid for. We so far in the black, it looked like midnight. And so you wonder, you wonder why I shout like this. You wonder why I'm screaming like this. You wonder why I'm praising God like this. Well, honey, if he's done for you what he has done for me, you might ought to start praising him right now yourself. You might ought to start shouting right now yourself. You might ought to start rejoicing right now yourself. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. My God, my God. Some of y'all think I done lost my mind. But to be honest with you, I have lost my mind. I now have the mind of Christ. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Do y'all do know what a praise break is? I got, I got a couple more scriptures, but before we do it, I, I might get in trouble, but before we do it, I want to have a little. Andre Krause, Andre Krause used to say they call us holy rollers. 
and what they say is true. But if they knew what we were rolling about, they would be rolling too. <laughs> Esther, I got seven, six minutes. See, that was a little apple pie. Now I got to get some collard greens. <laughs> God, God, we, we, we're created to praise the Lord. You know how beautiful that picture was? All different kind of ethnic groups in here just praising the Lord. Some of y'all clapping on the first plea beat, some of you clapping on the second beat. But we got every beat in just right then. We got every beat in. Some of y'all was picking them up, put it down, pick them up, put it down. Some of y'all said, I can't do that. You just started leaping. And some of you just started doing the ballerina. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. He receives your praise. Now look at this, man. Esther 9. Esther 9. Hallelujah. Now, in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution. Look at this. In the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them. The enemies that are about to come against you, they're in expectation of ruling over you. But God getting ready to turn this thing around. And instead of those enemies ruling over you, you'll be ruling over that situation. I decree that right now in the name of Jesus. On the contrary, Man, I, I, I got to let y'all go, boy. Y'all, y'all greedy. But you, you get what I'm saying? Rejoice and be glad. Amen. I'm trying to build your hope up. I'm trying to build your hope up. I'm trying to get you stirred up a little bit. All that word you got, I'm trying to just strike a match under that thing, man. You need to get your fire back. Some of y'all lost your fire. You quote scripture, it made me sleepy when I listen to you. You don't even say it like you used to say it. But I believe there's a fire burning on the inside of you. Well, I'll tell you what, I feel like I'm at a... a, 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 a one of them there holiness churches. Well, you got saved. You're supposed to be holy. Amen. All right. All right, I'm done. I got, I got, I got two more sessions. Now listen, listen, now listen, let me, let, me, let me tell you what, I'm, this, this is why I believe I'm finished. It, one thing for us to do it all here together, I want to see how you, I, I want to see what you do when you're on your way home. I, I, I want to see what you do when you, when, 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 the, when the devil come knock on your door, how you going to respond. It's easy to do this when you're surrounded by all these word of faith people. But do you have a praise right in the middle of your situation? That's all I'm trying to say, man. All right, now, now listen to this now. I pause because I want, I want you to see this. Offering concludes your worship. It's not one of them things you say, well, 
you know, it's time for me to work on me and work on my business. So I'm going to go and do, do what I need to do so God can do what he need to do. No, no, no. It, it, it's a part of worship. I think it's Psalms 96 where he said, give glory to the Lord, give glory to his name. And then he says, well, how are you going to give glory? He said, bring an offering. You remember the rest of it? He said, bring an offering. And then he said, and worship him. Bring an offering and worship him. I believe in Matthew 2, the Magi came and they finally found Jesus. You know, they showed up with three types of gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But they said something. They said when they entered in the tent and when they saw him, they fell to their knees, reaching into the treasury to worship him. See, you got to start looking at your giving as worship to what God has already done. Now, all of a sudden, you start giving out of gratitude and appreciation and thanksgiving. You recall when Abraham uh, won the battle of the kings? It was after the victory, he said, oh, I got to appreciate him. And he gave a tenth of all the spoils that he had. In fact, you're going to find yourself giving more than a tenth. You're going to find yourself giving 20 and 30 and 50 and Sometimes you're going to give an 80%. I've given 100. I get to thinking, I'm like, oh, look at God. Oh, you did that too. Oh, my God. I get to worshiping him, and then I pray in tongues, and the next thing you know, the whole check gone. <laughs> you know, this new text thing, you can't keep up with it. You done mashed the button. Get... <laughs> I want you to worship God for what he's done, what he's doing, what he's going to do, and I want you to do it through gift giving. Give him a gift. Now, here's, here's what he promised. He says, you've got to decide in your heart what you're going to give. But I promise you, I'll multiply what you give. He says, I can't multiply what you eat now. I can only multiply what you give. I can't multiply what you consume. I can only multiply what you give. He used the illustration of a farmer. He says, I cannot multiply what you keep in the seed bag. I can only multiply what you plant in the ground. So if you give a little, you multiply it, you get little. You give much, you get much. And then here's the thing he said, he said, watch your attitude. Because if you give grudgingly, sometimes your attitude is even uh, greater than the gift itself. Something happens when, when we worship God with our offerings. After we spend time exalting him and praising him and thanking him and, and, and expressing to him as we've done tonight. And then we bring him a gift. And that gift is given out of love and appreciation. A gift that's given out of honor. One of the things about idolatry you're going to hear about is the fact that it's the value you place on the thing that's greater than God. It's not just some wooden thing on the thing. It's the value you give a thing. I'm going to be talking about some idols today in our society that we need God to divinely recover us from those things so we can see him as first place and value him more than anything. And that's what honor is, when you value God more than anything or anybody. So if you value God's word, if God's word carries weight in your life where it is valued, then when you pray, your words will, be carry, will carry weight in heaven because it will be valued. I will honor those who honor me. So think about how you're going to close this worship service through the giving of gifts to him who is awesome, to him who has done so much. 
You've got to decide that. If you need an offering envelope, if you'll raise your hands, ushers, please take note of those who are here and ready to worship God with your gifts. I need you to see it that way. Worship God with your gifts. If you'd like to use the text to give, you can text the word event to 36609. Or you can go online to kcm.org slash TV event and give online there, kcm.org. Or if you'd like to mail in, you can mail to Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. Or if you want to call and get assistance that way, especially those who are streaming, you can call 877-281-6297. There are several ways and several avenues where you can worship God with your gifts. And we're grateful for those of you who are streaming online. We're thankful for you. We pray that you cut a rug in your own house. <laughs> and that rug was clean when you cut it. <laughs> this is always an amazing meeting, an amazing week. And Taff and I are always honored and privileged to be a part of it. And as you do this now, as you worship God with this, I want you to think to yourself, man, wow, look at what God's done. I almost, I almost fell for that trick, devil, and I almost started paying attention to your suggestions, and it didn't work. God has been too good to me for me to turn and follow you. Amen.